welcome to a folding session in English. In English, we're going to do it in English. I keep it steady, keep it cool, consistent. And what we're going to do today is called an eye. We're going to fold what I, what I refer to as eyes. Now, what are eyes? Let me tell you a little bit of what eyes are. Just a little bit. I'm going to just sketch the idea that we want to break through, right? <clears throat> Actually, it might benefit us to see the case for the eight fold eye. All right. Maybe if we break it down, we can figure out what's going to happen. Let's see. So this is an eight-fold eye. And we're going to do this, but we're going to do it in this six-fold version. So what we want, what makes an eye an eye, we have this petal shape, and then it goes into another petal shape that's facing in, right? It's facing, I don't know, the opposite, not opposite, but like the direction. It's hard to explain. Um, do we have a background of this? No, let's just do it. Let's just do it. We're going to do it for the six-fold case, though. So this is eight-fold. We're going to do it for six-fold. It's going to be great. It's going to be fun. Hope you enjoy it. Hope you have fun. Take it easy. Pull out a piece of paper. We might use a ruler. It might be better down the line. It's for some little things here and there. If you want to do it, I recommend you get a ruler out, get a pencil out. But all you really need is paper. Everything else is just vanity. Everything else is just, you know, inconsequential. But it's very useful sometimes. But what you really need is just space. Manipulable space. Manipulatable. Manipulatable. Man what? Manipulatable. It's a funny word. Manipulatable. I'm going to start by folding the paper in half. Once you get your paper folded in half, then you will take one of your corners and place it on the line that you folded while at the same time the fold will hit right at the other corner, you see. There you go. Now we can spread this pattern as much as we want, but we also want to keep it, we want to keep it classy, we want to keep it cool, right? So yeah, I guess it'd be better if we just got the biggest one, but no, let's get two of them. I'm going to turn it over. I'm going to place the excess, the remainder, where that line hits. I call this the remainder. Place the remainder onto the fold line itself. And this will make it so everything else is just falling away. Because this being a six-fold angle, what that means is that the full circle divides into six parts, right? So half a circle will divide into three parts. And that is why, with this angle, there are three parts at this line. You see? One, two, and three. Math is fun. And where... Well, it depends on how you want to do it, or how we want to do it. But because I want to just focus on the minimal triangle first, what I'm going to do... Alright, so I have this so far, right? I have my equilateral triangle going on, right? I'm going to take one of these corners, this one, you can see that there, my finger. Now place that point on the other point, like that. We're gonna get a nice rectangle with the ratio of the square root of three to one. There we go. So, all right, so I've got this. Uh, I don't know if you saw what I did there a little bit. Uh, but the idea consists of being able to navigate, to trans, to transmute, to transmit. No, 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 no. To travel, no. To navigate, no. What is the word? What I'm trying to say is that I do a fold here, right? Let's just say I'm going to do it again. I'm going to do two of them. So I do a fold there, that's a perpendicular line to this edge, right? So now I, that would, it'd be great if I could just fold this and everything else was just gone. So I do that fold and so I do a little rip and then I start separating. 
translate yeah i guess so no but I'm actually just trying to see i want to get the cut to move down this line so there's a little point there and what i'm doing is i'm sort of you know i guess it is translate isn't it i guess it is by the way can you guys hear me okay i'm not wearing the headphones this time last time i was wearing headphones i'd have a microphone in them but now i'm just like on top of the phone oh my goodness gracious all right Traverse. Yeah, I guess that, that works. That works. Traverse. All right, so I have here my rectangle. It's all good. It's all great. The ratio of this rectangle is the square root of 3 to 1. That's the ratio of this thing. Uh, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take one of these corners, the one that's on the long sort of angle. This is a short angle right there, right? You can hear 5, 5. Good. Thank you. Thanks for the... So the feedback. Appreciate it. We're here live, Monterrey, Mexico. It is at time of recording the 17th hour on the 18th minute, 18 of, 19 of February. That's a word I, I have a very hard time pronouncing. February. 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 And yeah, it's, it's that day of today, in this year of our Lord, 2023. I don't know what that phrase means. I just hear it in movies and I think it sounds funny. That's how propaganda works. And this is how I ramble. All right, so I got that fold, right? So, so far, so good. We have a six fold division going on. Everything makes sense. So far, it's so easy. We got a nice little rum here going on, right? The double equilateral triangle rum. That's what I call this one. The double equilateral triangle rum. And now with this thing, I'm going to fold corner to corner like this so so far i think we're just still in basic shapes we haven't gone into anything crazy at least not yet and we have this now the design that i am proposing exists inside of a hexagon yes but it also requires that we have a 12-fold division angle and so what we're going to do to get that 12-fold division angle going on is once we have this, we have to recognize somehow, we have to understand, get it into our heads, that this angle right there, that's a six-fold angle, right? Somehow get it into our heads. And if we divide this angle, which is a six, into in its half, then we get 12, right? Because it almost multiplies. When you divide something in half, it, it multiplies by two. Because now you have double the amount of things that you had before, just in half. We actually, in Spanish, we have that word for it. Doblar. Doblar literally translates to double, but that's the word we use to fold. So in Spanish, when you say that you want to fold something, you are just as well saying that you want to double it. So that's nice. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side there. So what I'm doing on this side is taking the edge and placing it on the fold itself. I haven't drawn anything yet on it. So far, it hasn't been necessary. By the way, the fold that I'm doing only requires that I hit up until this middle line right there. I don't know if you guys can appreciate the shadows and all, but the idea is to get this mechanism going on, this 12-fold mechanism. It's not a 12-fold mechanism in as much as it's just this, right? It's just moving like this. You got to get this system on the other side as well, so I fold this in half. And then I fold this in half. And then I fold, where's the half, right? It's, you gotta keep in mind, keep in mind where your reference line is. Because it's almost, it's exactly what we're doing here, you see? Matching this line to the fold, right, right there. Same thing over here, we're matching just, that it's an edge. It's almost easier to do. So what I, what I like to do personally, I like to take my paper, put it on the line, and then once it's sort of established, I sort of slowly but surely keep pressing on it little by bit, little, little, and then press, 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 and then I shoo, shoo, and just navigate, navigate that fold. And just a little bit there. Good. I was talking about this mechanism. It's, it's in, in origami, they, they usually call this 
Um, I think it's called a petal fold, a petal fold. It's usually found in other divisions, but when we're dividing a, a thing like this, it also works. It's only in another angle division, but it's still the same thing somehow, right? Okay, let me just get my bearings. If I'm not mistaken, what we want to divide is here. Let me actually draw this one. All right, let me see. We're gonna experiment. I haven't folded this before. So you guys are, are in as much as I am. What I'm also going to do for this drawing that I'm doing, also there's a technique that you can employ. It's great for replacing rulers, especially when you're folding, where you lift the paper up and you kind of use the wall, but you have to hold it. You have to somehow hold it with your hand and then slide the pencil down and it works really well. Wait a minute, where's the other color? Every time, man, I sort of got, I can't just do a class and, not, and be prepared now, can I? Mm -hmm. I want to get some blue. The blue I got, it's all dirty. Oh, here it is. Here's a nice, clean, we got an edge on this blue. Yeah, we're just taking it easy here, lazy Sunday morning. No, it's not Sunday morning, it's Sunday afternoon. But yeah, we got about like uh, maybe an hour's worth of sunlight, but we, I'm not gonna, I'm trying not to take that long. It's supposed to be an easy design also, so we'll see how that goes. Because I haven't folded it before, but I, I was just um, analyzing this pattern because I'm doing it for a big piece, a big, big piece. And this big piece is gonna have this pattern into it. So I thought, hey, wouldn't it be nice if we did it? Also, because I did a poll on the on the Instagram here, if people prefer to have the long live session format or the short real version format, and people voted for long format. And when I asked their favorite number, everybody, well, not everybody, but six one. If you're just watching, oh, that's cool, man. That's cool. You don't gotta do nothing. You don't gotta do nothing. You just gotta, yeah, enjoy. Hope this is entertaining. And we'll see, well, the drawing helps just to orient, orient ourselves a little bit. I'm just, so what's gonna happen now is I have to find which bisection it was, right? So there's a line here that I have to, either it's gonna be this one and then bisect toward here or this one and bisect toward the, I think it's this one. I'm pretty sure it's this one. So what I'm going to do so I'm going to get what, what I call the double mountain technique. Actually, no, it's going to be this way. It is going to be this way. All right, so it's going to be this line. So this line and this red one. So I guess I could draw this one as well. I'm not going to, uh, just because. And I'm going to simply place this fold, but I have to take into account that I need the fold to originate at the intersection. Now, all this... Everything that's not here, I don't care about. All I care is the fold that's inside of there. So, I can just manipulate my paper in such a way that this thing arranges there. I begin to press it and let it go. So if you're just joining us, because I see that some people joined. I don't know if it's always a coincidence or not, but some people sometimes just like, boom. Um, yeah, I don't understand how any of this works, but anyway, so far we have a 12-fold division inside of a half an equilateral triangle. And I'm gonna use a pen. No, no, don't use a pen. Let me get a pencil, wow. I don't know if you guys can prove I think that maybe a green, of course, no tip on that. Well, yeah, a pen it will be because we have to move forward. Nah, I don't want to. I really don't want to use a pen, so I'm not going to.
It's just gonna go harder on the thing. Oh, nice, Fatima. I'm glad. I'm glad you're enjoying this. So you get a nice bisection going on there, and now, where this line hits, you want to draw a perpendicular line. You want to draw a line that just makes this red line fall on itself. And the reason why this is happening, it will become clear in a moment. But the idea is to... Wait a minute, I think actually I might benefit from this extension. Oh yeah, it's full, awesome, beautiful. Oh, not using a pen because it's going to bleed. Uh, if I use a pen, it'll go on, on the other side. And then when I draw the pattern on the other side, it will bleed with the, with the information that I used as a reference and it, will, it won't look as clean. And that's what we're going for. Especially when, uh, I guess, not especially, but in my experience with drawing, we're using origami to draw geometry. It, it's best to keep some cleanliness. Uh, so origami is a, a very messy thing, or at least I, I like it to be messy. But with the Islamic geometry, it's best when we try and keep it as, I don't know, as clean as possible, you could say. Okay, so I drew this just to indicate that these two lines are perpendicular. Yeah. Now, if I have to now, okay. See, this is where it gets crazy. I'm going to copy this blue line on the blue lines themselves, right? So what I'm going to do, if I do it on this side, I think it'll be more clear, clearer. You can see, I have this fold, right? And now. If I activate the intersection, right, so this line is my light line, as I like to call it, and then it hits there, you can see that this thing is kind of like, you know, doing its thing, it's like move me, activate me, I'll go, okay, and then here I activate also this blue, and then it just kind of following on it, and it copies it. Now I can change this fold from a bounce into a valley, so I turn it over. And I like to have valleys because it's easier to draw on valleys, you see. Now, same thing over here. Activate this in mountain, activate this in valley, follow through on the mirror line, and then boom, there it goes. Change this mountain into a valley on the other side, it's easier. Turn it over, get it there and finish it off like this. Now, I'm going to draw a line that makes this one fall on itself and this one go up. So the line that I fold, I want this to be, I want it to be perpendicular to this line. So I just kind of mind my intersection. I can sort of see it there. And when I fold that intersection, I'm just making sure that this line falls on itself, yeah. If the line falls on itself, then the fold that the line does will be perpendicular. And there it is. Now, my contention is that by doing this little trickery do, what I've done effectively is have this line that I just drew, this one that goes up the way up to this, this edge right there, this one, this line is the same length as this one. Let us do a little foldy fold and see if my contention is correct. And it seems that it is, you see. Hey, La Flaming Hot, how's it going? Good to get easy. Ricky, come here, you got me going live. Good to. Ricky, come here. You know it. I like actually the nickname Kami. It's pretty cool. I'll take it. Kami. Right on, right on. But can you appreciate the madness of this thing? Like how elegant this thing is? 
by the way, this is the same kind of operation that we do in the Eightfold System. Only a little bit different, but it's the same kind of idea. You see how crazy this is, though? Like, I don't know if it's appreciable, but it blows my, my mind. I'm going to draw this one in red. So, just to recap, this blue line right here, well, the one I'm holding up on my fingers right now, is the same as this one. Now, the implication somehow is that if I were to follow through on this, so we'll hit somewhere around here, I suppose. Yeah, somewhere around there, I don't need to. It'll make the same triangle as here. So, if I can make a figure that fits inside of this triangle, and then turn this onto here, then they'll be the same proportion. But I don't have to figure it out so much because I, all I really need is a, like just a series of what I call mirrors and then everything will be in its place. It's weird to explain. But when, before that, before we get into the final boss of this area, because this is kind of advanced, I suppose, I'm going to do the same operation. I'm going to do this quarter of a dodecagon on the other side and get this corresponding thing going on there and then we'll get a more a clearer look at what this thing is now just to recap how did I do it well first I started with this I'm gonna do the, the double mountain technique what I call DMT double mountain technique get these two lines in mountains and then the idea is to connect both my mountains to a fold and the resulting fold that connects mountains will be a bisection of the angle between the mountains you see so I get that and I fold it and uh, by virtue of what I told you before you could even like skip a lot of steps but we're not going to we're gonna follow through on the the order of operations that we did because that's the what's right I guess which line that I use here that I use a red I guess I did use a red so let's keep let's keep consistency there all right, so where that line hits, we draw a perpendicular line. <clears throat> you just got to keep this into account. Fold this down. Make sure that this line is falling on itself like we do. And we fold this. Just making sure, yeah, it looks pretty good. All right. Set it up there, one. You can even see how it hits exactly where this line would hit right there. That's pretty cool. Same thing over here. And then turn into the valleys. Turn what is a positive into a negative and what's a negative into a positive. By turning it over to the other side, so it goes, so it goes. Much appreciated, everybody that's here in the room hanging out hope you guys are enjoying this and uh, yeah you don't got to understand it you just got to be open to the idea that's all I don't even understand it dude nobody does everybody just kind of figures ways of doing these things but nobody gets it nobody really gets it and that's fine we're not supposed to we're not God you see, it's all good, baby, baby. Okay, so this is where a, a, um, a ruler might come into play. All right, but so far, so good, right? So far, we have our little red lines there, sort of indicating some mirroring. That's cool. Um, we want to get these red lines now on all of these triangles, yeah? What do I mean by that? <laughs> well, this is, this is like, yeah, that's, that's a good point. I'll give you that, Sebastianator. I'll give you that. 
Uh, but I, I, you know, I would try and, you know, say that nobody really gets it. I would insist on that. Because that's the really the best way you can go about any of these designs. So I did a little trickery there to copy this thing. Right? Do this little movement. And this is in order to get this bisection going on there because that's what this whole design hinges on. This sort of bisecting. And remember how I said that, you know, how this length is the same as this length? Well, it just so happens that this angle is the same as this angle. Because, yeah, so that's sort of like the idea behind this whole thing. And just get this bisection there, so this one. I'm going to use red for all these bisections where these lines just hit on these. And these are going to be very useful to draw the pattern. Actually, if, if I really wanted to, all I really need are these mirror lines. Everything else is just, like I said, a vanity. And we're not vain, are we? Well, we are. It's fine. So we want to bisect these angles, just like these are. We're going to get all of them. And this will be uh, really useful, I insist. It's not a necessity. We don't have to. By the way, we only need the bisection until it hits the red line. Everything else we don't need. We only need to bisect to get to there. So when I fold, I just kind of fold like that. I get my DMT, right? Double mountain technique going on. And then just fold until it hits on the red line. And then I can stop folding. And then I go on to the next one. Where are the mountains I want to bisect? It's this one and this one, right? So I get it together, control it, move it, and then pivot around. And because the triangle is isosceles, meaning that we have three angles, two which are the same, and one which is different to those two, um, these two being the same ones, they will uh, meet, they will intersect. And, I, and they'll actually intersect on the bisection of the other angle which actually will be a right angle there at the end, but that's fine. So now we'll draw these lines and then this thing I will do on all of the triangles. I insist we don't have to, but it's incredibly useful for our purposes. because I want it to be as clear as I possibly can, right? Bisection, bisection, then I get a bisection here, a bisection there, bisection on all of them. And actually, I, I'm, I'm going to try and propose the following. Uh, we will fold this thing, which I think it technically is a 12-fold design, but it doesn't matter. I'm going to take the edge here because that's where the triangle is, and that's where my, my mountain is, the one I want to match, right? So boom, boom, there it is, bouncing, matching, going, next thing, yes, boom, boom, right. It's bounces. You also want to get it there because it is there also. All right, so far so good. All right, good. Let me get that one. Then <laughs> it's a lot, dude. It's a lot, but again, you know, it'd be cool if we um, you actually use this in, what's the word, uh, copy? No, tracing paper? Is it called tracing paper? I think it is. We could use this for tracing paper. We just have to get like some more, you know, force on these lines that I'm drawing in. And then we can just use the tracing paper. And we can get all kinds of designs for this thing. We, do not, we don't necessarily have to get the one I'm going to propose. But the one I I'm going to propose to you is the one that will, that will uh, do, yeah, I don't know, what the eye. What's fun about this 12-fold eye, well, 6-fold, 12-fold, doesn't matter, is that it requires an angle in the 24 system. The angle is 7 pi 
No. 5 pi over 12. That's the angle that we're going to be using. And it'll just kind of come up. Like this is sort of like in God's mind. And it pertains to the star which is inside of a circle with 24 points. And you jump every other seventh point. No, yeah, every other seventh point in a 24 pointed polygon, you jump seven points and you draw a line. And then where that line hits on that vertice, you count seven points again. ¿Cómo estás grabando esto, Veridia? Estoy grabando esto con un tripié. Estoy encima de mi cámara con la una cámara en la frente. No, tengo, o sea, está el tripié, tengo el tripié entre entre mis piernas. Eh Sí, eh, estoy viendo la cámara. Estoy usando la cámara como si fuera uno de estos doctores que están operando. Entonces estoy doblando en la pantalla. A veces me distraigo y sí me pongo a doblar. Eh, viendo mis manos, como que volteo alrededor de la cámara. Y sí, así, así es como estoy grabando esto. Estaría chido una cámara. No, no, estaría chido. Una cámara en la frente siento que estaría muy movida. Orion is a friend, it's a friend of the, I want to say the friend of the podcast, but this is not a podcast, but the friend of the show, if this is a show, and he was asking me, the guys that don't speak Spanish, he was asking me how am I recording this, and I told him that I have a tripod between my legs, and um, I'm looking at this thing as though I was like a doctor operating, this is like my fantasy, I don't know what a doctor is, but I have friends who are doctors and they've told me about this, they do operations and you're looking at what you're doing through a camera. Saludos a Lurion Metaverse. We're actually going to interview Orion on the next next week for the podcast. That episode that was published that I put up on the site on my stories, I put I'm, I'm doing a podcast now with some friends. That one that we recorded, I think we recorded way back in September, and it's, it was it's so trippy how time just makes everything different it really is it's uh yeah, i don't know it's something it's really something i think uh so far so good i think we've we've pretty much done everything yeah so this is this will work beautifully for what we're trying to do yeah yeah we don't need not no more all right so actually it'd be pretty cool if i had some tracing paper but alas i don't but if you actually were following this this is the point where I would recommend that you get out your tracing paper and put it on top of this. I'll show you the points that we're going to be drawing, and I would be drawing them and not folding them because I want to make the case. God damn it. I want to make the case that. Yeah. I don't know. Just make a case for something, for this method, for this idea. So here it is. I have a ruler here. This is metal and loud. Maybe I have something that's not as loud. Yeah, I have this, this very, very kind of crappy. I, I think I paid like maybe less than a dollar for this ruler. So here's here's a point. I'm, I'm going to select the points actually. So I'm going to draw a line that goes from this point, from this center, and it'll sprung out and it'll hit here. And then the condition is when this line hits the red, I will stop. That's where I will stop. I will go no further. And same on the other side, right? So it will also go through here. So those three points are on a line. I'm going to draw that line. I'm going to stop drawing this line when I hit my bisection right there, right? Right? And same deal for the other side. We got this point right there. We got this point right here. Stop when it hits the red. All right? So now, we. this is where actually folding comes in. Uh, it's so super handy. Because we actually have to mirror this. 
Actually, I'm, I'm trying to think, like, where are my references, but I don't see any. I mean, like, logically, it makes sense once I start folding it. I was going to say, like, yeah, you know, we, can, we don't have to fold, but, you know, I am going to fold it. So this line that I drew, I'm going to actually use the pen. The pen that I used will serve as a sort of a, a, a die tool. This is what's called a die. A die is a thing which marks your folds. And spelled the same as die, D-I-E. But it's a, it's a, yeah, it's a mechanical tool that is used to mark creases. Industrially, it is used to crease or to mark the creases of cardboard boxes. Like the cardboard box where your shoes come in or your carton of beer or whatever. All that carton goes through this dye process, dye cutting it's called. In Spanish it has a very different kind of name, it's called a suaje. So if you're ever in Mexico or a, a place where they speak Spanish, and you want to get some dyes going, that's what you say, a suaje. All right, cool. So I have to actually mirror my things now on this blue line, so this black line, I have to bounce on this blue. Uh, let's see how we do. Let's see how we do with this thing. So, all right. Boom, there's the blue. Back, and then bounce. Oof, that's uh, very messy, very messy, very messy. I wanna do it so it's clear, so you guys can appreciate the intricacies of this thing. I guess it looks better here. Like if I start to pull it up and then, so what I'm doing is with my, in the back, with my middle finger, I'm actually pushing this red line in a mountain form up. And then the idea is I have to find where this point actually, okay, that, that's another way to do it. That's another way to do it with this reference that we already have, right? So that's what just, yeah, just by virtue of, um, yeah, it's actually, that's the way we could do this. Okay, I'm going to do that then. I got this song by Kid Cudi stuck in my head. I don't know the name of it, but he says, um, I'm so reborn, keep moving forward. If anybody knows the name of that song? I think it's by Kid C Ghost. I don't remember the exact name of the song. So interestingly enough, actually, with this reference that I'm getting in there, it's almost like I'm doing another star inside of it, and that, that's actually exactly what's happening. I'm getting another star system sort of located in the intersections of these. That's, that's pretty cool. I've forgotten about that little fun fact there. Let me do that in Mountain Valley. I am aware that it has become unintelligible. Not unintelligible, but it's... It's definitely surpassed some kind of a beginner level deal, but not really. I mean, I'm just doing the same thing just over again. It's inside once more, connecting the dots, right? So much for that ruler, though. You gotta roll with the punches. And then last one over here. Just gonna twist this around, get it to where I want it to be lined up. And then I'll go down nicely. Uh, what line should I use for this? Maybe blue, maybe red. Maybe it don't matter. Yeah, maybe it don't. But see what this does is it provides me with another point. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go for red. Oh yeah, it's there. I was gonna say that I don't think I have this line, but I do. Oof, what a mess, what a mess. But not really, it's all, it's all good. It's controlled chaos. But see, okay, now at this point, I now know where this is gonna come off. So I know that from this point that this line hits, it's now gonna come through here. So if I actually get my, my ruler again, 
just have to find where this point is hitting and then just make it go through here and again when I hit on the red line following I stop All right so there and then hit the red and I stop and see now here's where it gets fun because time is running out it is 1752 and sunset I think it's scheduled for 18 17 something 1830 I think so we got about maybe 15 minutes maybe all right you can see the thing is starting to come alive also this is one of my favorite little things to do with the Islamic holding this is so satisfying like it feels so good fun 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 let me think how to move forward the main idea I have right now would be to mirror this on this blue and just get it to copy like as a cross. Here, I'll show you an example of this. So I fold my line. It could be a, a mountain of... I'm actually going to fold it in mountains so you guys can appreciate a little better the fold I did there. Now the blue line, I'm going to fold in valley, right? So I have this in mountain just because I want to show you. And then I will fold in valley this, right? And see, if I continue folding on the line that I want to mirror on, in this case, it is blue, you can see that it continues off to here. I'm folding it in valley. It hits the intersection I want to mirror in, and then it goes off in mountain. And where it hits in mountain, that's where I start to fold, like this. You see? Now the idea is that these angles are the same. But they're, they're, I mean, in theory, right? But you know, this is why I sort of didn't want to use folds because it, it does sort of allow for some kind of error. Like sometimes, you know, it's because it isn't like entirely easy to just fold things like exactly on the fly. But, you know, we could be ingenious. We could uh, we could be clever, right? You could figure it out. I'm actually thinking that this line is going to need a little more um, actually has to go through all the way to the end and this line also goes off until it hits this blue over here and I guess we can bounce it off on the blue so now this is pretty much all I'm gonna do I'm gonna find where the mirrors are and just bounce everything around You have to be able to disregard it to hold up in some kind of uh, suspension. Like some kind of it, some kind of it. Just momentarily, for instance, I have to hold some kind of uh, yeah, suspension in order to get this line to, to mirror properly, right? I want to get this thing. I extend this line a little bit more, goes further, but I only need until where it hits a red. When it hits a red, that's, that's all I need. So, yeah. That means that I'll go from here, go through my point, and hit there. And now I also know that it's going to go through here, right? So I know that now, with this information, I can go from that point all the way down. I can get out a ruler in this case. Yeah, why not? And then I'll just go off into the distance. Right through that. And now that, that it's drawn, I can fold it. Once it's folded one way, I can turn it over and fold it the other way. And this will be incredibly useful. This is kind of the effect that we want. I'm going to mirror this one now on this red line. Um, the angle for this star that, that's sort of being bounced around here will not be perpendicular to any of the radial lines in the system. However, if we were to bisect the system to go further into 24-fold, then the star would match. 
So this is actually a 24 fold uh, star. It's pretty cool. Yeah, so where it hits there, now we're going to the other point. Do, 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 do. Hits there. And then there it bounces. And there it is. And uh, boom. Yeah, cool. And now we have to extend this, and off it goes. Again, we only care until where it hits the red line. After the red, we don't care. We don't matter. So it's better not to fold. So you see, I stop when I hit my red line. I stop. Hits the red. I know that it's going to go through the blue. Same deal, I'm gonna mirror this on the blue. It'll hit on this red, it'll hit on this blue. I think it'll hit on the blue. And then yeah, it'll bounce around there. Mm -hmm. This one will also bounce to here, right? So, you know, I can make choices. It's also a cool little choice here that it will just go through the corner. It'll hit exactly at the corner of the paper, which is just, insanely beautiful I, I find this yeah just yeah beautiful to know and like this is just so cool it hits exactly on the corner I, I was looking at the paper not on the screen but on my hands because it's that much more exciting also my back is sort of hurting and I was like looking at it actually if I were to use a camera properly I would I, I could actually stand straight but I start hunching it's so easy to hunch Right. Okay, so the idea is that this petal shape is going to be appearing here also. But we should actually go through this, like we should finalize this, do it right. Yeah, let's do it right. right. So this is the part where you have to, yeah, go inside of yourself and remind and find that part that that won't give up or whatever, the part that gets pumped at listening to heavy metal or certain rap songs, you know, hype mode. So I met this dude on the street, was it yesterday or the day, two days ago? And I had no idea who he was, dude. I had no idea who he was, but he was like, and see, there was something about him that was just like, this guy's a character, you know, you just kind of know. And he was, he was like a UFC fighter or some shit. Like he's a, yeah, like he, he beats people up for a living and shit. And yeah, it was just interesting talking to him about life, I guess. And I don't know where I was going with this point. We just talked about like being present and how for him it was breathing that got him to be present. And oh yeah, he said that when he was young, like he didn't have all this privilege, right? He was like, he didn't, he also wasn't into drugs or anything like that. So he was into fist fights, right? Just one of those dudes. And he said that when, when he was young, he used to wash cars, right? For not a living because he said like, yo, it's not, it's not like we were hungry in my house. Like we had food and stuff, you know, like we weren't poor or nothing. But he said, if I wanted money to buy my things I wanted or liked, I had to work. And he said, I washed cars. And then I asked him, what was the first thing you bought with your, with your earned money? Like when you got paid, what did you spend it on? And he said, I bought a CD. So of course, the next question is, which CD did you buy? And he said he got Ride the Lightning by Metallica. That was like the first album he got. And he, he said that he still like gets pumped listening to it, that he loves that album. Ride the Lightning by Metallica. 
And I thought that was pretty cool and I, and I kept that in mind and so... And then I asked him which... I know that album very well. And the, the thing I actually thought about with that album, like I listened to it when I was young and then it came up in this movie called uh, The Place Between the Pines. Um, it stars Ryan Gosling. I'm going to zoom out a little bit here. It stars Ryan Gosling and it's about this dude who is a motorcycle carny, I guess. You ever see that movie? The Place Beyond the Pines. The Place Beyond the Pines. I think it also stars in... I, th I think Bradley Cooper is also in it. Maybe some young actor as well. Uh, but the point is that this guy goes from like being a carny to being a, a bank robber. And in the, in the craziness of the movie or whatever, um, he has all these tattoos. That's like part of his character. He has all these tattoos. And he listens. So like they play Ride the Lightning several times during that, during that movie. It's like, a, it's like his theme, like his whole thing. You don't listen to metal? Well, I recommend it. I think metal's cool. I think it's just like that. It's just cool. It's a, it's a cool thing. Uh, but it's definitely not for everybody. I also, I'm doing this thing again where I like trail off and looking at my hands. It's just easier to fold in my hands than it is on the, on the thing. I get distracted. Yeah, so yeah, For Whom the Bell Tolls was the song that he said. And it also reminded me of a book. So I have a friend who is an avid reader. He has his, his, his room is full of books and he reads them. Like I know people like me who just buy books. I would just get books or just whatever and I'll just keep them around and be like, yeah, I got books. And maybe I'll read like a couple pages and then on to the next thing or whatever. Uh, but this guy actually reads them, right? And he said that he was reading for who the bell for whom the bell tolls by uh, what is it Hemingway? And I opened it, and the first page was something alluding to this, like um, you know, when one person dies, we all kind of die with them. Like it's just sort of this, you know, this oneness of being in the human existence or whatever. And I forget where else. I, I like that that phrase of for whom the bell tolls has been sort of coming up in my periphery, my unconscious periphery. It's so cool, man. Like the unconscious, it's amazing. Because if you're paying attention, then everything's symbolic. If you're paying attention, then everything's sort of speaking to you. And that could just as well be like a precursor of, of going insane, going crazy. But it could just as well be the, the beginning of your enlightenment. You understand? Like the, the beginning of your sort of embodying your being completely and fully and at least in a way that's not overwhelming because if it, it very much is it very well could be the case that we can't actually experience our being completely because of, you know it's, it's just inconceivable to go that deep maybe it is maybe it isn't doing origami here islamic origami we're doing paper folding we're also doing like Islamic patterns on them. You can see the polygons in contact on here. You can see that we make a, uh, a pentagon. It's an irregular pentagon. It's not a regular pentagon, but it's a pentagon nonetheless. <laughs> exactly, right? I didn't want to say it, but yeah, you got it. Like part of me is fantasizing like, holy shit, is this the end for me? Like, am I, is this God trying to tell me like, yeah, your time is near, bucko, or something? It'd be fun if I actually could. Uh, I think that's in also a Hemingway book. No, no, it's this in Russian book on fatalism. I forget the name of the book. It was a good one. Oh my god. So I have to do this thing I did over here, I have to repeat over here. Let me think if I can actually get away with not doing it. Mm, no, no, I have to do it. There's no easy way out of this one. Death by paper cut, yeah. That's the official decree. 
No way, dude. No way. Are you seeing this? Like, is that real? Is that is this third? Like one, two, three? That's insane. I didn't. Wow. Wow, it is. No, it isn't. Oh God, I hope it isn't. When things are too lined up, I'm like, oh man, I hope. I hope it isn't, man, because then it's like. Ah, oh, then it's just too much. Then it's just too much. Like God is just too much sometimes. Why are you playing, God? Why why are you playing with me? Playing with my emotions. I say this in a joking way. I don't I don't think that God is mocking me. It'd be funny if he was though. She, whatever. I'm gonna try and talk less. I'm gonna try and keep it, um, yeah, do it fast. Do it fast, but not less precise. But I think that the idea is sort of conveyed, at least the steps to it. I think, maybe not, maybe, uh, of course not, of course not, what am I thinking? But the, see, the thing is like, there are no easy solutions to this other than we have sort of points that we know where it hits because of the bisection thing I told you about, like where this thing, it's on the bisection of this, right? On the, um, yeah, on this line. And then where that hits, I know that it's also gonna come through there so I can get our ruler and not fold it, but actually just draw it, right? Let's see, I, let's see if we can figure this one out by doing this, because I know where my points are. The sun is setting, hurry up, exactly. I'll have to review the video. Yes, welcome to review the video. So I know that it's gonna go through there, it's gonna go through here. Right, so I know it's going to go through there, it's going to go through here. Now here's where it gets tricky. No, it doesn't because I, know I have my two points. So as long as I can find two points on the line, then I'm set. So that's the point there, that's the point here, yep. And then these two points right there, and it's going to hit on this point over there also. I can also tell that I'm sort of losing accuracy by this method, which is why I rather fold sometimes. But hey, what you gotta do? So like I need to find two points on this. Where are my two points? That's it, in it. Yep. Okay, so that's a point. That's a point. I'll take it. Boom. That's a point. That's a point. I'll take it. Right here. Right. Sorry, right there on this red and this blue right there, it's gonna hit on there. Man, I'd rather fold this thing. So I have a point now, cool. Now I know that, that line hits here, that line hits there. I know that point, it's gonna go through here also. I have a point to this one. Hits there. This one simply hits on this corner. Finishes off. Oh man, where the hell am I gonna find this one? Hmm. Mm hmm. This one's tough. This one is tough. Like if I had no information other than that, what's here? Where are my points? Where in God's name are the points? So that one's pretty obvious. So I'm just missing this part. That's that, that, and that'll do it. That'll do it. So what I can do actually is I can just fold this thing. I guess that's uh, I guess that's valid, but I I do not like this uh, this trick. I really no 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 no. I will I will just bounce this one.
So I'll just mirror that line and that extension of this line will hit on where I want it to. It'll also do this thing. And with this, I can just finish this off. And now I can just turn this bowl into valleys. And that's pretty much it, dude. I mean, that, that does it, doesn't it? I'm just gonna actually fold this thing and I'm gonna turn it over, I'm gonna get out a Sharpie and I'm gonna draw this pattern with a marker on the other side so that it looks clean. And, you know, if we're lucky, we have time to just activate the system and see it in all its origami glory. We shall see. Uh, but yeah, but my contention, or my, my, my whatever, my what have you, I'm going to actually do a little zoom out there, is that uh, this shape is the same as this shape. One, two, three, all these, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, all these eight pieces are the same. And that's my proposal. And also, they meet exactly at the center. It'd be cool if we could cut it out and just put it on top to, to show you, but the, the geometrical process that led us here all sort of implies that that is the case. So we'll just leave it as homework, I suppose, if any of you care to do it, which I doubt, uh, but it's fine. So what am I doing? I, I have all the pattern, the line from the pattern that I folded, so that's good, that's great. Pretty much does it. Awesome, we're done. But now I'm turning all the lines into mountains on this side so that I can turn the paper over and have all the lines be, um, be valleys on that side. And then I can draw them with a thicker pen. And with that thicker pen, it'll look cooler and the guidelines won't be visible, therefore creating the illusion that all of this was done in a way that implies a much simpler process. And by that logic, it'll look magical. And that's what we really want, isn't it? We want magic. Maybe not. Maybe we want to stop wasting time. Maybe we want to do the things that we say we want to do. That we say we're going to do. Like me, writing a book. Or making videos. I don't know why, but these lives don't count in my mind. Like, they don't count for the greater ambition that is making YouTube videos. Oh yeah, the, the ambition. Let me find my pen. There you are. Oh, I'm going to get on top of this thing again. All right, now turn it over. Have this thick, this thick board right here. Let's see.
I'm just making sure that these folds are valleys because that's sort of what this thing hinges on. trying to concentrate on here. This is messy, don't like that. Too messy, man, too messy. Too precise, but at the same time, so messy. How does that work? I'll tell you. Fuck. What's funny is that I, I think I'm going to keep just the, the screenshot when it was with the guys because this is not looking how I wanted it to. Ah, but I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Oh, that, that line was very satisfying to do. I think I'm getting the hang of this. Okay. There you go. Oh, it's a mess. It's a mess. Okay. No, yeah. It looked. <laughs> fuck. It looks so much better on the other side. Oof, look at this. Disgusting. Oh man, it looks bad on both sides now. Well, that was a mistake. Well, what you gonna do? I'll tell you what I'll do. I'm gonna cut this sucker. I'm gonna cut it. Yeah. All right. Cool. I'm. I'm cutting it. I'm cutting it. I don't care. I'll tell you what though, before I cut it, I will activate the system just, just to appreciate it, just to see how it looks. And then we're cutting it. It should be a simple cut too, like there should be no problem. What time is it? Ah, 6.21, so yeah, we're pretty much out of sunlight. Yeah, so, you know. It is what it is. We tried, we tried. You see, you gotta pop the energy, man. You gotta pop it. That's the only way.
you got you got to be able to to move it around you see also the only way Do not vibrate for me. No, no, no. Be quiet, my child. I spend a lot of time on my stupid phone, man. I hate it. I want to be here, man. I want to be now. I want to be up in this imaginary digital virtual world. No. No, we have to live. So that's pretty much how the system would look, I guess, in 3D form. This point actually is quite interesting. It's a lot of stress, enough to pop like one, two. It does a little one, two, nice little trickery. Um, it doesn't collapse, you know, that, that well. I think that uh, the energy displacement uh, suggests very interesting possibilities. However, I find that these possibilities are uh, quickly negated somehow. I find that the and the movement of this sort of will not allow for simultaneous uh, crushing or collapsing. Therefore, this jargon rants is, uh, yeah, it's weird. But it's fun. It's actually a fun little exercise to do. I don't like uh, the mess of the lines somehow. I'm going to leave it alone there for a second so I can maybe, maybe get a screenshot of this thing. I don't think I will because it's not as clean as I would have liked, as I would have hoped. However, I did what I could. And now I'm going to actually take it a step further. I'm gonna cut this son of a bitch. I don't mean it like that. I, I just say these things because they sound very funny to me. So I need to get to the minimal triangle. In this case, it's this. This is the minimal triangle. So if I cut that, then it'll cut all across. However, if I do do this, then um, the, I find that it just creates certain inaccuracies that I would rather not have. And uh, maybe it's just better to cut it unfolded, not in fourths, but in halves. But maybe not. Maybe there's a better way to crush this thing. Maybe if I start folding it on this side, right? And then go into the half. And then go into this half. Maybe it's tighter. Maybe it won't deviate as much. Maybe. I hope. Let's see. We'll find out. Let me take out my knife. There's my knife. And we'll cut it. So this is also very useful. Uh, sorry, what I mean is it's very useful to have the bisection lines because all these lines that I'm doing are just parallel offsets and they will intersect exactly at the same, well, not at the same line, well, in the same line, on the same line, but not at the same point. And then I sort of um, just sort of eyeball a certain distance that I try and keep constant between these. Sort of imagine that this is going straight. And then where this line is sort of going, Keep that going.
Let's see if this thing worked out. I may need one more pass on these. Mm -hmm. I think this knife is also seeing its last days. Or at least the knife, not the not the not the hole, not the plastic thing that I'm using to to hold the knife, rather the metal thing that's inside. A friend of mine invited me over to play with this band yesterday. I don't sing, but I, I, I do it. I don't like to do it, but I do it on my own. And he invited me to sing, and he kind of scratched in some part of my ego that said, yeah, yes, it'll be fun. But it's weird because I don't know how, when to start singing, right? Like they're just playing, they're just jamming. I don't know, through my voice app, screaming, which was fun. <laughs> it was fun. It's fun to scream. I like to scream. Let's see how this goes. Yeah, the, the marker was a was a mistake somehow. I think that I need to practice the marker more, or just get a one that doesn't have like this weird rigidity um, point. So once with the so once you cut into an Islamic pattern, you get the ability, especially if you have all the bisections in place, to do what's called what I refer to as a bevel. It will create a, what's called a bevel effect in wood carving. Or I think it's just, I don't know if it's just wood carving or what, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a bevel. It's hard to explain what a bevel is, but it's written as B-E-V, with a v, like a V, E-E-L, no, yeah, E-L, yeah, bevel. Yeah, this is a little crunch, crunch thing. So anyway, so that's uh, that's it. That's the the sixfold eye. Hope you guys enjoy that, and uh, yeah, give it a try. Let me know how it goes. If you don't, that's fine. We'll live, and yeah. Just before I go, though, I want to just maybe explore a little bit. As to why I said this was a six-fold eye, right? And I pulled up this design at the beginning of this, if you could call it, class. Nice one. Thanks, man. I want you to see the similarities, right? So I want you to look at this. So we have the double equilateral triangle rum right here, right? I have my six petal shapes, right? All these are supposed to be the same. I can actually pull some of these, the ones I cut, I can put them on top of each other. And I'll see that they are the same, although that's not the best scenario because how do you know that I just didn't pull up all the ones on this on this layer? So I'll leave that to you. Doesn't matter. Anyway, so we have the six petals, and I'm gonna pull up this the eightfold one now. You see? Same kind of idea. Six petals around like in an oval shape, only that this is inside of a square. It's sort of the same idea. It's as though if you were to understand this half of a square as this triangle. Whereas in here, we're not using this, but we're using two triangles, two equilateral triangles, and it works the same. It works exactly the same, only it's a different system. But it works exactly the same. This also is a lot more permissive or con conducive towards um, this kind of design. So I'm going to do a 3D design with this, the ones I do, the big ones. With this design, not with this, this one. But I just wanted to show you because I'm pretty certain that this is the way to go. And yeah, I just wanted to let you guys in on this. Hope you enjoyed it. Had a good time. Whatever. I'll do one in Spanish later. And, uh, you know, have a good week, everybody. All the best. I find the pattern to be too small for the pattern. Imagine it would look amazing if you multiply it a few times. Exactly. That, that's, where it's, that's where it shines. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <clears throat> or you can also use it as a stencil. Get some... You know, some areas all things or something. Um, what time is it? It's eighteen thirty-three. So that's about that. About wraps it up. Man. All the best to all the best to you too, man.
Sebastinator. It was great to have you, man. Thanks for the feedback. Everybody else is in this. If you're watching this live, if you're watching this later, or, um, you know, maybe sometime, yeah, let me know how it went. Always love to see the results. Cheers, everybody. God bless. Take care. Bye-bye.